Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Green. I am a culinary instructor at Kirkwood Community College. Um, I just wanted to share with you how I got into this field, um, why I love it, and why I've stayed in this profession. The aim of this video is to remind all of you that you need to do what you love. If you just find a job, it will be boring, um, but if you find a career, and if you find something that you really enjoy doing, it won't feel like work. And, 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 and you'll do it and enjoy it, you know, as long as you're doing it and as long as you're involved in it. So, a little bit about myself. As I said, my name is Anthony Green. I am from Jamaica. Jamaica is about 3 million people. Um, we export bauxite, which is a dirt that you turn into metal. We produce sugar. Um, tourism is one of our major income earners. And we grow some of the best coffee in the world, but we're not coffee drinkers. All right. Um, we are um, the home of Bob Marley. He sings, One love, one heart. Let's, you guys know the song. Um, growing up, Bob Marley was an inspiration to me just because of the music that he sang. Um, we are home of the, the world's fastest man. We have beautiful beaches and we, have, uh, we cook a lot. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Fast food isn't a big thing in Jamaica, so we, we cook a lot. I got started in cooking because I lived in a household where my mom said, if you're going to eat the way you eat, you're gonna learn how to cook. So I started to cook at home and I started to go to the market with my grandma. Um, she would go to the vendors and she would do a little negotiating of the price. So she would say, how, how much are those tomatoes? And the vendor would say, $5. And my grandma would say, what? $5? Are you joking? And the vendor would be like, okay, okay, I'll give it to you for $2. And she would do the same thing again and would get those tomatoes for 50 cents. I was carrying the bags and I did that every Saturday morning. So I was always around food and I kind of liked it a little bit. Um, so fast forward, I graduating high school and I got my first job. I was a bank teller. I was counting other people's money. I despised it. I, I dressed up nice to go to work, but I did not enjoy it at all. I was good with numbers, but it was not where I was supposed to be. So I got a job working in the hotel industry. I started washing dishes. I started cleaning the floors. I was peeling potatoes and onions, the, that kind of work, you know, just to kind of get my feet wet. And I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It doesn't, didn't matter if I was at work for 10 hours or 12 hours. I, I really enjoyed it. So I started to move from one hotel to another. A lot of these places, I started at Ritz Carlton Hotels. It's one of the top chain hotels in the world. And um, beautiful location, beautiful properties. These are places where you would go for a vacation. That's one of my favorite spots there. I was cooking on the beach. I was grilling chicken, I was grilling burgers, hot dogs, but I got to come to work and the ocean, I had a view of an ocean every, every day, every day. I loved it. Um, we did dinners, um, sometimes in the evening, in the night, on this lawn here, and this is all at Ritz Carlton, uh, Rose Hall, Great House, I'm sorry. Um, after a couple of years of working, I decided that I wanted to go to culinary school. So I left Jamaica and I went to culinary school in Ohio. Hawking College is what it was called. Um, the reason why there's a picture of snow, because I never saw snow before. I left 96 degrees and I ended up in minus 17. It was cold and windy and I was not ready. I wasn't dressed for the weather. Um, so my school, I went to culinary school, um, Hawking College, two years. I got my degree um, in culinary arts, I an associate degree. While I was there, I worked two jobs to put myself through school. And I 
understood what the meaning of hard work was. I was making maybe $5 an hour washing dishes. And, you know, I went to classes during the day and then I would work a night job after that just to make sure I was able to get through school. That was a tough time in my life, but I was irrelevant because my focus was on where I was going. Never get too fixated on where you are right now in life. Think about where you're going. Always, always where you're going. So the day after graduation, I got on a Greyhound bus and I went to the warmest place in the United States. So I ended up in Florida. I was at um, Naples Beach Club and I was a, what we call a rounds man where I worked in every department in the hotel. I worked in the restaurants, I worked in the bar, I worked um, as a cafeteria cook. I did all those jobs just to get myself, you know, more experience. And that was a wonderful job because I met chefs that were invested in me. They trained me. Um, um, we had lunch together. We hung out together, kind of build a community, a family. And I enjoyed that a lot. So I got my first big break um, as an executive chef at an Irish restaurant. What do I know about Irish food? Not much, but it paid well. Um, and we, ha we did a lot of business. So I was making, I was making about $17 an hour there. I was young and that was a lot of money. It was a lot of work. And I worked with individuals that um, didn't speak English very well. Um, and it just kind of reminded me of the days when I was in high school thinking Spanish, I'm never gonna use that language. So I didn't go to classes. I skipped classes whenever I could. And there I was needing to communicate with my cooks and I was struggling because I didn't pay attention and work on the things that I was going through in high school. I, I, math, algebra, didn't like it. And there I was using formulas to calculate people's paychecks and things like that. So my suggestion to you is always, you know, you never know where your life is going to take you, try and absorb as much as you can. I went to um, Hawkscape Resort and Marina, I was a banquet chef there. I was responsible for cooking for large weddings and large events, um, and I love that. As you can see, a lot of the places that I work on, they're, they're you know, oceanfront properties. So I like the sun, um, I like the sea, um, good combination for me. Um, and then I came to Kirkwood. So my wife is from Iowa, um, and we decided to move the family closer to home. Um, at Kirkwood, I became the banquet chef, um, and then I, turned, I became a full-time instructor after that. So Kirkwood is a community college, um, one of the best community colleges in the nation, I will say that. Um, and there is a hotel, the college built a hotel to teach students um, how to cook, how to run hotels, how to manage restaurants, bars, anything in food service and hospitality, you can be trained to do there. So it is a 72 room property. And we do um, weddings there. Um, we do a lot of large events. Um, the Hawkeyes stay there when they have home games. And our students get to work with the professional staff that's responsible for all of these events, right? Um, so I'm just going to skip through a couple of these pictures because I believe that food should taste good, number one, and should look good, because you eat with your eyes. So I kind of got into um, making food look pretty. Chocolate fountain, this is a favorite, it's just melted chocolate flowing, and you can dip whatever you want into it. Lady fingers, strawberries, marshmallows, bacon. Um, so there's more plates of food. Again, you eat with your eyes, so visually, um, the customer likes and enjoys seeing this. This is a cheese display, vegetables, more cheese, um, more vegetables. Again, you know, we enjoy putting these works of art together. This is a fruit display. Um, another fruit display, but on this one, we use a lot of exotic fruit. So we use star fruit, um, guava, 
um, pomegranates, um, 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 jackfruit on that one. Um, students, when they start classes at Kirkwood, um, they go through um, an instruction phase where they start to learn um, the basics first. So you would start by learning how to use your, your knife. Um, then you would learn basic cooking. So you would learn pasta cooking. You would learn how to cook grains, you know, rice. Um, you learn how to make um, different types of salads and dressings. Um, and one thing that the students get put through, we, we kind of train them on how to um, use their taste buds. So we blindfold them and have them try different things to see if they can figure out what it is only based on taste. As a chef, you have to be able to use your taste buds. Um, then students start baking bread. They move on to cake, um, cupcake making, um, the pastry area. Um, and then they start making edible centerpieces. So they get to work with chocolate. They get to work with sugar. Um, they get to make um, vegetable um, carvings. Um, and that's a rose made out of um, um, sugar, made out of gum paste. And then students start to cook for um, the guests. So after all that training, they get to cook for the guests afterwards. So they're put in front of the guests, and this is a student at a pasta station. And um, I think she's enjoying herself. Um, students also get to um, showcase their talents um, in a forum where they get to cook for 100 guests. Um, if you can tell the lady in the middle, that's Giada De Laurenta. She visited Kirkwood. Um, and um, our students are, you know, making a difference in food service, you know, all over the country and, um, and sometimes out of the country. And, um, you know, we, I love that, you know. So I am going to show you a video of, you know, if you are interested in cooking, you know, how to start. You know, one of the things that I always emphasize with students is, hey, this is how you use your, your knife. Oops, let me. Let me go back to that one. Um, and where, there it is. All right, so now I'm going to show you the most efficient and safe way to use. All right, so now I'm going to show you the most efficient and safe way to use a knife to cut some vegetables. So here I have my chef's knife. It's sharp, um, it's clean, it's ready to go. I have a cutting board and it's also clean and it's flat and it's not moving, ready to go. Um, I have a piece of celery here. You can cut, you know, onions, carrots, whatever you want. Um, important thing, when you're cutting is you want to make sure you have a good grip on the knife. You don't want to hold the knife like this with your finger on the top. Um, you don't want to hold the knife like this. You want to hold the top of the handle um, with your pointer finger wrapped around the base of the blade. So you have a nice firm grip. When you cut, sometimes um, chefs will They'll cut like that, and that's okay, but it gets very noisy. In a kitchen environment, you want to be quick, um, and you also want to be as quiet as possible. So you want to rock the knife on the surface. So at no point in time does the knife leave the cutting board. It's always on the board, and it is rocking from the tip of the knife to the heel of the knife. So constant rocking motion. And then your non-knife hand, also called your guiding hand, it's called a guiding hand because this hand tells the knife where to go. All right, I know you're looking and you're seeing what you're doing, but this hand tells the knife where to go. All right, so you want to tuck your fingers in. All right, don't have them pushed out like that. 
You want to keep them nice and tucked in, nice and straight. You want to put the beer, your thumb, you want to put the beer in the cave. If you don't put a beer in the cave, Yogi gets a boo-boo, and we don't want that. So fingers tucked in, thumb tucked in, and now you're ready to cut. All right? So always want to make sure whatever you're cutting is, of course, clean um, and also stable. So you see my celery here? It is sitting nice and flat on my board. If, say, something you're cutting is too long, you can always put it into more manageable or smaller pieces, all right? So we're just going to do a simple chop. So remember, fingers tucked in. Your guiding hand is telling the knife where to go, so you're not going to hold the celery all the way. On this end, we're going to hold it as close to the knife, and then rocking motion. When you start cutting something for the first time, don't try to go fast. Technique is everything. So you want to go slowly. You want consistent pieces. And again, the guiding hand is telling the knife where to go. And then as you start cutting, you can develop a little bit more speed. Again, technique, very important. All right, one more time with the other piece of celery. So. Fingers tucked in, rock, and then you cut. I know you can't see my eyes right now, but I'm not looking down because the guiding hand is telling the knife where to go. All right. And if you are able to do that, you can cut anything. Have a good day. So, if this is something that you're interested in, any kind of food service, anywhere in the world, I would say your, your next steps, or maybe it's something that you're already doing, is to cook at home, start cooking. It doesn't matter the size of your kitchen, it doesn't matter the equipment that you have, you know, a stove, electric stove, a gas stove, an oven, it doesn't matter. Start cooking for your friends, family, for yourself, and just get in the habit of being around food. You know, watch the, 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 the food channels. There are so many videos on, on YouTube, or on, there's just so many videos on food and how to make simple dishes. Um, and if you're still interested after that, then get a job in a kitchen. Um, get a job, um, any food service kitchen. Again, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, fast food, uh, mom and pop's place, just somewhere where you can be, again, around food, serving people, understanding the pace that food service has sometimes. Um, and then after that, get some training. Um, get some mentorship, meaning you work with a chef that is willing to take you under their wing and um, help you to grow from that. Or you go to culinary school. Um, there's wonderful culinary schools all around the country, but there's a great one right here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, so, and even after that, I would also suggest, you know, you keep moving forward. You know, whatever you've accomplished, whatever you've done, wherever you are in your career, that's not the end of it. You have to always keep moving forward. Um, you're going to have some setbacks, some struggles. It doesn't matter. You know, just keep moving forward one step at a time. All right. So I, I hope that was some good information for you. I hope um, you were, you know, challenged a little bit or, um, you know, maybe you want to look into food service. But again, at the end of the day, whatever the career is that you choose, um, make sure you love it.